Hi everyone, today I'm painting daffodils again and I'll try to show what I mix as well. I'll take a small palette and see how it goes, if I don't forget to show it. So I'm starting with, uh, I have two types of daffodils again. And I will try to do both block in and um, complete sketch. I call it sketch because it's a very, um, how to say, fast just for showing how I do it. So I'm starting with Liridin and transparent oxide red and Viridin. So adding more Viridin and these are going to be my greens of daffodils and then based on that I will be adding yellow or white or whatever I need to daffodils. So I'm not painting vase this time. I did it last time. So it's a synthetic brush but it's very um, soft and at this sorry it's soft and at the same time it's uh, has some tension to it so I'm going straight without underpainting trying to paint my main daffodils where I kind of pre-drafted them so it's a little bit too brown because like I said earlier transparent side red is very strong synthetic color so I'm trying not to overpower with it and then my viridian just disappears in it so I'm trying to do more viridian over it anyway this is just a quick sketch of greens leaves and I treat it uh, as underpainting, so I'm adding a tiny bit of white to this one, just to make it lighter in these areas. I had white from previous painting, so that's a little bit lighter version of this, especially where this um, back of two daffodils will be bending. So some leaves, some lighter leaves going on, on over top of the darker ones. So I think that's it for greens for now. I'm going to put my palette and wash my brush with the same brush or maybe I'll see how it goes with the same brush, yes, for now. I'm going to mix a color for my shadows for the white daffodils and it's going to be interesting mix. So it's going to be magenta and viridian so if you look this is magenta and viridian and then a little bit of white so still not enough magenta so it's kind of gives a purple i can add a little bit of brown to it so it gives me like purple gray color so that's what i have a white daffodil here at the background probably need a tiny bit more white because it's lighter than that so anyway, I'm going to do this like a pale gray color. I will add some warmth to it as well because it should be warm. So do a little bit of brown and it seems to be dark, but I will paint white over it as well. So this is kind of the one that I see at the back here. And then there is another one going this way adding tiny bit more of white so you see it's lighter now it's lighter it's my paper towel for my material so that's another white daffodil and like I said I will be drafting the other ones later so one thing with this white daffodil where the green stems go into it has a little bit of warmth. So I'm going to use interesting colors that was I learned in one of the workshops I took with Daniel Keyes and Kathy Anderson. It's called green gold or it could be sometimes called yellow green. So it's a warm yellow. It looks like this on the palette. Like this. So I'll go directly with this color here and add some warmth into the stems. And then I'm adding 
tiny bit of white to it as well and just very gently paint over here as well before I go full swing with the white so the other thing are the one of the daffodils at the back so oh the, I'm using white and touch of blue in it so I'm going to paint off over these ones because the, sh the petals are transparent so they have white and um, other colors in them not just purely white so that's why I'm kind of going with white in the lighter areas and then I keep those grays so I'm going to do a little bit of yellow middle so using cut yellow deep and cutting yellow light both together because I'm trying to see what the, where that middle stands so it's kind of the edge of my and I use a little bit of white as well I didn't show how I mixed the yellow, so yellow is like this. It's cutting, cutting yellow light and then cutting in yellow dip. So the one thing with this light, it's a little bit, oh sorry, I put the wrong color <laughs> by accident. So cutting in yellow dip and cutting in yellow light. So I kind of leave it like this for now. There is a little bit more warmth. On this daffodil so shapes of colors and petals at the same time so now I'm moving into yellow daffodils so using transparent oxide red and some cadmium yellow dip so that I'll try to use this and maybe cadmium yellow light as well so this will be my I'll see how it goes with the middles of this. So I have one yellow daffodil here, so I'm going to use this. I know it's not as orangey, but I can use this yellow as well. Um, I need it like this now, so it would stand out later. It gives a depth in the middle of this daffodil. I'll be adding green, so I'm actually mixing straight into those greens I had. And I have some shadows here, some squinting, and adding more greens that I had. This is just for the darkest parts on this daffodil, and then go the same way on this one. It's okay that I paint over leaves, so using those greens that I already mixed kind of giving myself those shapes and then the daffodil at the back I have as well uh, that's not that light <laughs> that dark so again I'm mixing probably need more viridian mixing what I already had so I'm using this viridian added more viridian and doing the back it's not as dark because I'm going to paint over it I'm just giving myself a range in which I'm going to work so now my main color is going to be cadmium yellow light because I have to variety add it to different varieties of greens and yellows so it's very very bright and nice so working on the first daffodil kind of making the shapes of the petals just to give it some dimension and there is petal here and then I do the same on the other one there's petal here there's petal here and it's okay I paint over the others because after this I'm going to refine everything 
just my first impression and actually I'm using a little bit of this cool white I had so nothing get wasted <laughs> on my palette and actually it's true and try normally reuse paints as much as I can so this is at the back I don't worry that much about it just uh, daffodils have six petals so I didn't do any background or anything I may like roughly scratch it in just because if I don't do background the silhouettes of the um, silhouettes of my daffodils will not be as defined so what I'm going to do I'm going to do some white and some gray colors that I had on my palette before it's actually a mix of blue, brown, white. So I had a little bit of um, what's called ultramarine that I need to add. So I'll show this color in a minute once I add a little bit more of that color. I don't need too much because my background is white that's where my daffodils right now and actually with daffodils you have to be very very fast because the conditions of the flowers keep changing very very fast so this kind of gray i had here so it's similar actually that proves that you can mix gray from lots of different colors so because i didn't mix it on palette if you compare this is the same kind of color so what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this gray over and around and then I would know where my daffodil shapes are as well. And that will be easier for me to then go with white as well. Then I would know so I'm just kind of painting quick silhouette of these daffodils with this grey colour. So that there is no gap there but I'll have to paint it. <laughs> okay. So a little bit here. So we define the shape of this daffodil. don't have too much paint right now because it's a background and I want it to be thin. And at the same time define. So the same grey color. So this kind of gives me idea with values and where I stand with daffodils. Okay, so now I'm going to do more precise work on daffodils. Just give them more definition and enhance some colors and make them look more like flowers. Even though I like sometimes sketchy look. That's my personal preference. I'm using the br soft synthetic brush now. So this is a soft synthetic brush. So unfortunately it's slightly broken and may come off of the ferrule, but I'll see how it goes. I may swap it. So I'm taking this nice big brush and using white and yellow. Yellow for and I'm adding more white and I'm just adding a touch of viridian because my daffodils have a little bit of green in them so I'm going with this brush and look at the lightest parts of daffodils I think I need more white at this point as well before I pr 
proceed further. I definitely need more white. So I lost a little bit of this orangey middle. I want to bring it back. It's slightly green as well. So I'm going to squeeze more white and then I'll continue with my I'm going to squeeze white on the palette. And I think I'll use this synthetic brush as well. This is my palette, how it looks right now. So I'm mixing more like a stronger colorway has more white in it, even more. And try to do the strokes that would define the petals. And I will paint around, actually, petals, I will paint around them greens as well. This is just Find the main petals. So there's another one in the light. I'm cleaning my brush and adding more white and more yellow. So it's quite a good thick color. So a little bit of petal here. can see light falling here and light falling here in this petal. And there is a little bit of light in this as well. Majority light on that one. So now I need to go back and define my shadows that I lost. Because that's work in progress. That's what painting is about, like finding things and then going back and fixing if you lost some of it. daffodil kind of a little bit on here as well now give it even more definition so this little triangle here so I don't clean my brush as often as I normally would do I think I'm risking to contaminate it We'll see what happens. There is actually I have to put darker color here on this petal. So I'm adding more yellow to my mixture so they will not become completely white because these are the yellow ones. At the same time, because I'm working with the same, I should have worked with two brushes really if you decide to work <laughs> I recommend you to work with two different brushes so now I'm going back into my gray mixture to give definition to this flower even more so I'm going around the petals and just see which ones and where I need to make a little smaller or a little bigger So going like this, 
you're doing the kind of silhouette of the flower. You don't have to be like very sharp edges and very precise. This flower is in front. That's why I kind of focused on it. And now I'm going to do back, going back to my green. So I don't see full stem of it, but I see this stem. Actually, it's too brown. So the ridge of this brush is very good for painting verticals as well, like if you want to do stem or anything. So I'm make washing this brush really, really well to get off all the dirt of it. So it's back to, that's how I wash it. It's very good and clean because I'm going to go to my second daffodil, adding more yellow. And try to do the same thing. So there is one petal. The brightest one, I think, here. That's how I bring dirt. <laughs> and then this petal goes all the way here. And there is another petal this way. Like I said, the daffodils changing so fast. Maybe the one that I... But I'm going in the shadows now as well. Maybe when the... Um, photo that I post might be not exactly the same. Because they change so fast, but you would at least you would notice which one is which. So I'm doing a little bit of sh shadow refining here on this daffodil. So I'm going back into the dark greens just to make sure that I don't lose my middle of the daffodil. Then I go back to that cadmium yellow deep and whatever I had. I think it works good for this. It kind of goes around here as well. And I will do some ridges. That's another thing I forgot about to show that. Like on this one, there are some ridges. I did some ridges, but at the same time you don't want to lose kind of internal part of this. So hopefully you see well what I do. <laughs> so the same thing here, there are some really nice yellow ridges, so just go on with the, my brush like this around it. So there is more depth in here at the bottom of the flower and when I squint I can see both green and brown and the same with the other flower I'm going to refine the shapes so again doing the same thing I'm trying to see maybe I should use a softer brush actually with daffodils sometimes if you for example overdid it and the paint you can't lay the paint anymore. Next day when the paint sets, you can always go back and it's actually much better. That's what I did with the other painting. I thought I overworked it and then I went back and it worked okay. So I'm doing something different now. I'm trying to see how a softer synth not synthetic, this is actually natural, this is a rosemary brush, so I'm trying to see how this brush will lay some paint, because I think I have too much paint here, and I still want to lay it how I want it. There is one petal hanging here, kind of hanging. This petal is much shorter and this petal goes this way. Okay, I'm going to paint around them. Get this thing back on track.
let it set a little and I will paint around it. So I paint around it with the brush I had before. And what I was going to do, I was going to do some greens around it first because it's in the middle here. So actually this petal goes this way. It's kind of hanging. And then I go with greens around it because these are where the leaves are. That's the stem of this. Once you have the stem, sometimes it helps as well. Actually, stem is a little bit off. Stem is here. I'm going to increase the depth of greens here because I put the stem in the wrong place so you can see you can easily correct it now I'm going to do a little bit of this light the stem has kind of almost like brown so I'm mixing some keep lowering my palette and you can see so I'm doing using a little bit of this light like you know on daffodils normally there is a um, at the very top there is a little bit of brownish soft stem like this So now I'm going to see if there are any more greens around this daffodil. So yes, there are more greens on this side. And I'm fixing those now. There's a big leaf going here as well. Actually there's no leaf here, but I may created. I think it looks better that way. And I'm going to see if that background background goes around this daffodil and it does. So it goes on this side a little bit. Goes just under here where there is other daffodil. And actually where I put green, there is a little gap, like peekaboo. So that's how it goes, really, until you're happy with it. <laughs> and the level of happiness and everyone has different. So like some people say, I just can't leave it. And the other people will be refining it until they're happy so what i'm going to do i'm going to go now go, go back to my soft brush and just see where there are nice green shadows green brown shadows i bring them back some of them and then i will do my lightest lights again so normally that's how I do. I go all around, then I come back, and then I come back to one flower. All the others, the ones that I thought maybe can be improved, and you keep comparing as well. So these are very, very bright flowers. Made a tiny bit of green to it as well. And sometimes you want to leave it, like I already said, sometimes I prefer impressionistic, impressionist look rather than just copy exactly how it is because I think it looks more beautiful, but that's my personal preference. So going back into the flowers, the white flowers, so I'm going to add more to this previous mixture. 
it's not completely white it has a touch of blue it's actually almost absorbed into the panel surprisingly so I'm adding white not completely white like I said with touch of blue too much blue maybe maybe not so as I have shadows for these ones already this one is not really actually a little bit more too cool maybe I made it maybe not so there is some ridges so these are just ridges I'm not painting all of them let me take some of the ones I see so I think they look a little bit too blue to me so I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow and green in it just a tiny tiny bit shadows that I lost there was another petal there but because it's at the very background I don't want to focus on those Let's just give idea that's all because our eye can read that there is a daffodil there What I'm going to do, I'm going to do now my brightest white. So my brightest white will be almost like white with little touch, even lighter than I had before. And when I squint, I see a little bit in the here, a little bit in this petal, a little bit in this petal. Not too much white, and then somewhere here. At the same time, I'm refine my middle. Going back into this gray that I had, a very light gray. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. I mean darker. And then again, I'm going to in the shadow this gray color and try to refine this shape. So I think there was some because I don't see this flower that well. So I think I'll just go like this. And then here I have to separate slightly. Maybe make a little smaller this one. And I think I lost some of the white again. So on this flower, maybe just a little bit more. A little bit more here. little bit more on the edge of this one Actually, I'll try to add a tiny bit of yellow because those flowers just you can hardly see so I'm going to kind of smudge it there and I have another yellow one that I lost. In the meantime, I also will do something that I wanted to do a little bit more warmth on this flower and a little bit more warmth there. With some green there. So the last piece of the puzzle is going to be my back yellow daffodil. The same, I'm using this um, warm green color, 
as I did before. Just maybe add a little bit of viridian to it. So you can see that these are the petals. And then I'm going to do yellow, yellow green. I'm doing it a little bit more paler. So because this flower at the back just need to again refresh my palette by refreshing my palette I mean to add a little bit of so I'm showing viridian a little bit of viridian a little bit of so these are the petals another petal and the last petal hangs here now I'm going to do a little bit of more light and then I carve around them. So adding some yellow and some green. So this light falls here on this petal and then light falls here as well. So using still the same colors, um, cadmium yellow light and cadmium not cadmium, viridian and white, sorry. <laughs> so I'll cover around and then refine the lightest lights probably. So the lightest lights here. Here. And that petal. So the other one's a little bit darker and a little bit duller because they're the very back. This one is a petal actually. I don't need, I need to separate them, they're almost the same value. So I'm going to refine with my background color around them. So I'm taking some brown and some blue some brown some blue so it's the same gray color really i'm going up here and actually what i'm going to do i'm going to make it a little darker here warmer and darker So it's a darker gray. So this way I can carve around. I'm going up here. And then go around this petal. Go around here. A little bit higher and around this petal. So this way kind of defined this flower and I think I'm going to add a tiny bit of green again because I liked that warmth so I'm using that yellow green again but you can actually do this yellow green from any other color if you need to you just it's ready made and it's nice so this is the stem that goes here I may do a little bit lighter here as well um, trying to see I don't see any light over here but I see some light so I'm using kind of yellow yellow brown with white could be any really yeah and there is a little bit here as well I'll refine the greens as well as always refining back and forth so I put some viridin here viridin and some brown so just carefully go under there carefully go 
and the there and I think this one has some green in it as well so let's do some viridian in here because it was too brown So that's how I work on daffodils. So now I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should add some nice green in here because I really, really see it here. Some viridian. Also see some viridian here. Just a little bit. Just to define some petals. In the shadow, in the shade. Maybe even add stronger green here, where the petals darkest. So now I'm going to kind of scan through and see what I need to fix somewhere, and then I'll have a fresh look like normally I get a fresher look at the flowers and so what I can see is this petal kind of lost and I can always go higher in value for the brightest flowers as well that's another thing I can do like I'm doing now you have to be just careful not to spoil what you have there is a little bit actually shadow on this and then once you go through them you see which ones need actually correction which ones need a deeper shadow sometimes you, you don't see it all on the first day it's always nice to have a look another look at, on the second day so what else i wanted to do i wanted to define this flower because sometimes when pa paint sets in it gets darker so definitely sometimes second day is the best day to when your paint is still wet but it starts getting a little bit darker you can always add a little bit of light to it like I'm trying to do now but not all of it would probably go as well as I want it anyway I think that I achieved what I wanted to show how you can go a la prima and do so I'm going to refine a little bit with this gray, this flower a little as well, because I squinted and I think it's too light. Yeah, it looks better with a little bit of darker. Sorry, what I was going to say is um, sometimes it's good to do flowers a la prima because it gives you you keep your freshness of your impression from the flower and it's very fresh in your head and of course it's good to paint it from life because painting from life makes huge difference with flowers especially or with anything but flowers because you can see all different changes in the flower so I'm going to do this one tiny bit lighter with yellow where the light falls and then I go 
go back into the middle of it. And here I think I already did, probably shouldn't touch it. I actually want to make it a little bit maybe even darker. I think the warmer color would work better. So again, I'm using that green gold and some time of terra rosa. So a little bit of terra rosa. So touch here as well. And the last thing I wanted to do some stems on the. Daffodils, some of them are very light. So you can see how it brings. So not all of them, some leaves, some stems. Just very softly. Okay. So I'm almost done at this point. So I just wanted to show you. There are some leaves going here, but to tell the truth, it doesn't matter. For the sketch point of view, just uh, sketching flowers and trying to learn something, I think I'm done. So I hope you liked this video, and if you did like, let me know what else you want to paint with me, or if what you want to watch, and I hope I can accommodate that really enjoy painting myself flowers and I hope you like too so I just found something here that needs a little correction and I have to do this right back okay I think I think I think I did something wrong here actually I wanted to make the petal look better, but I that phone really distracted me. So I'm just going to bring that light back. I was talking about that maybe I wait until the paint sets so we could do this petal because right now the paint really doesn't go well on it but that's okay okay so that's it these are daffodils and the season just started, they normally go very fast and I hope I'll paint them more maybe I'll do another video on daffodils as well so hope to see you on my channel again thank you, thank you for watching, bye